so Ahmed is, is telling you to wind up. Um, and we didn't even get to North Korea. So do we, we have time for questions? Yeah? Okay, so let's, let's questions for Anna. Yes. There is a hope, but uh, that's not your job and you, you are doing your, your research, you're explaining your research. What is that hope you're talking about? Thanks. I think there's hope because we've got no choice to ha but to have hope. <laughs> because, uh, you know, what do, what do they say in, in a, uh, an uncivilised people? The, uh, what's that saying? It's a wonderful saying. Um, uh, evil flourishes where the good people do nothing. So we must, we must do something. And I derive hope as an Australian voter from GetUp. Because GetUp has harnessed the tools of social media in the same way that the alt-right has in Brexit and Cambridge Analytica. But they've done it to disseminate truthful information and they've done it with humour. And GetUp are one of the closest organisations right now in our democracy that I can see using propaganda techniques, and I don't believe propaganda should be a negative word. I think anyone in the media is dealing with manipulation, but doing it for the good. So that's where I derive some hope from. I also derive hope from the next generation, um, my children's, my child's generation, who have been brought up to be very attuned. You know, they roll their yes. eyes. Mm. They know about fake news. There's an extraordinary course being run out of M RMIT right now, which is feeding into secondary schools dig digital literacy and actually teaching high school students how to pick the real from the fake, but more importantly, how to follow the money. So next time you see a video and you're not quite sure if it's provenance and what the hell is that and why have I got it, please follow who made it. Please go right back to the source. Where's the money coming from? So those are the two things that, that give me some hope. And the third is these wonderful researchers who I hope to meet one day, who are trying to work out the technology to spot fake videos before we, before we are fed them. Yeah, and those verification tools are being taught at university as well. You know, where does that come from? These are the tools for you to find out if it's, if it's fake or not. Yes. I probably shouldn't ask a question of my daughter, but I haven't heard all of this because I don't sit down with her for as long as this for a few ago. Um, but thank you, Anna, it's just terrific. The answer to one of your questions came across my screen today. That is, how do we deal with this torrent of particularly the fake videos, which is really frightening? And the answer from the fabulous Melbourne resident, Caitlin, Johnston, who I recommend, said, we've only got one weapon on our side of the argument, and that is truth. And we have to find the truth, and we have to say it, and say it, and say it, and distinguish it from the other stuff, which is exactly what you're saying. In other words, as soon as we get into, we get into the same bed with them, then all is lost. Mm. I, uh, I agree about truth, but the, the sad thing is truth has ceased to become a thing of value. Yes. And uh, I think that what humanitarians, I'm going to call them, or the progressives, not the left, would do well to do across all sides of, of any political argument is use the techniques of persuasion that are being used against us back the other way. And the other thing is to reach out beyond our bias silos. So Helen was talking before about is there a class distinction? Is there a, a tendency to judge and then disengage from? We have to do the opposite. I mean, to be honest, if I'd been Hanson's spin doctor and if she'd stayed away from race, I could have turned her into the left-wing Aussie Joan of Arc. You know, she's got it. She's got that ability to capture people and she's also got a tendency to repeat the last thing she heard in her mind. So she could have been turned into quite an amazing progressive weapon. I almost converted her to put solar panels on a roof, but she was very frosty. Um, so, you know, we really shouldn't give up and we shouldn't also, the other thing that I've come across is that there's this thing called baiting the libs in America. And it's a thing perpetrated by right-wing think tanks, including those funded by the Koch brothers, 
where they deliberately send out disinformation, misinformation, to different liberal progressive minority groups, whether they're trans or African-American women, feminists, working class white men, whatever it is, to deliberately divide progressives. Mm. Divided, we conquer. And this is a thing. This is happening. And we need to reclaim these tools and use them back again. I'm not a moralist about this. I think we're going to lose if we just sit on our high horse and talk about the truth and not try to manipulate the other way. I think we have to, or we'll lose it. Yeah. I've always wondered about the word, oh, they are elites. The people who have the money are saying that the progressives are the elites and feeding that to the disenfranchised who are voting for the wrong elites, the ones that are going to give them nothing. I just find this absolutely amazing and you're absolutely right. But truth, unfortunately, uh, Trump introduced alternative facts. Apparently you can have alternative facts, uh, which of course are lies. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's Orwellian. We're living in a world where totally. I mean, Orwell got it. War is peace. Totally. Information totally. is power. The elites are, are the, you know, the starving artists and garrets. I mean, do you, want, do you want a little antidote? Do you want to see some North Korean propaganda filmmakers? Yes. Let's, There's something yes. very nostalgic about them because North Korean propaganda is still being made in the old Soviet realist style. And when you watch it now, you just realise how sophisticated we are in the West. Um, so I'll just show you a little clip featuring the North Korean Oliver Stone, I like to call him, he's Ri Guanam, and he's making a film on the decks of a real-life captured US spy ship in the river in Pyongyang called the US Pueblo. You may remember it was captured by the North Koreans in 1968 and it's now a floating trophy. He's making a film on it and he can because North Koreans still use B, B technology from the 50s, so they shoot on old RE cameras with no sync sound. So while he's making this film, there's a tour group of Norwegian tourists being shown around the ship, but it doesn't matter because he's going to dub the sound afterwards. Anyway, have a look at Re. Um, <coughs> Mikhail, this will be clip um, six, and it will be the first clip in this. Um, and this is him explaining the film he's making. Today, more than 1,000 Sydney siders took to the streets protesting against coal seam gas. Is it true that you're going to drill in Sydney Park? Hello? When children are getting sick and not getting better, they start asking questions. I had to do something to stop the mine. Then it hit me. I'm about to go to North Korea. You've got to be joking. So there I was, the only Western filmmaker in the world ever granted total access to the North Korean film industry, the most powerful propaganda factory in the world. Action. So I thought if I made a film in your style, then I can stop the gas mine. But I need your help. I'm <laughs> 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 Are you aware of climate change? Oh, you don't live on one side. Anyway, um, very old school, but they're still making films like that today. Um, I understand that they hold filmmakers in high regard. Yeah. Were you going to defect? Oh. <laughs> Jesus, not after warm beer, I'm not. Um, but yeah, they do, because like any totalitarian regime, the North Koreans, like the Soviet Union, uh, 
like Mussolini, like Hitler, realized how useful filmmakers mm, are mm, mm. to uh, maintaining their power. And, you know, Kim Il-sung himself realized that film of all the art forms is perhaps the most persuasive, second only to music. And North Korean filmmakers who I met, um, they were certainly upper in the ranks in the uh, party tier. And whenever they made a film that succeeded in North Korea, and by success in North Korea, it's not about money taken at box office, because everyone has to watch the movies. It's about which movie is the most popular. Kim Jong-il would reward them with gold Rolexes and apartments and, and new cars. But if they didn't, they more than one designer I'd heard about ended up in a re-education camp to mend his ways. Um, and one of the designers that got in trouble had failed to follow Kim Jong-il's second rule of propaganda filmmaking, which is when you're shooting the imperialist enemy, don't make his headquarters look too lavish and desirable. You have to make them look somehow expensive but gaudy so that the North Korean citizen <laughs> doesn't desire to suddenly defect. And he failed and was sent off to be re-educated. Okay, look, thank you very much, Anna. That was fantastic. Uh, and, uh, yeah, let's just uh, say thank oh, you very much, it. Anna. What a shame. <laughs> and uh, I'd just like to call on John Cleary, who is... Uh, he's a veteran ABC broadcaster and one of Australia's best-known commentators on religion to present a small gift of appreciation for Aww. Dr Anna Bronowski on behalf of Affinity. <sighs> thank you. Anna, this is, uh, I'm assured, come from um, one of Ahmet's uncle's shops, and you can be guaranteed of its authenticity. And uh, I'm not pushing a line here. This is, I'm, this is true, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, that was wonderful tonight. Thank you so much for that. We're both shocked, appalled, and deeply frightened. <laughs> frightened enough, I hope, to do something about it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Get up here. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Um, there's a happy clip with North Korean filmmakers wave at Australians, if you want to see that. Okay, let's have a look at that. Um, yeah. So, Mikhail, clip three in the same one. You just dive forward. Um, hopefully it'll, just to sense, give you some context, I <coughs> took a script about stopping coal seam gas. North Koreans have never hold, heard of coal seam gas, but they single-heartedly helped me in my mission <coughs> to make a North Korean propaganda film to stop coal seam gas. And this is them talking about the script and then saying goodbye to, um, uh, well, hello to people in Australia. Thank you, thank you very much for watching. Did you like meeting my cast? <웃음> 어, 오해 감정을 갖고 좋은 감정을 가진 오스트리아 창작가들에게 고맙다고 인사를 전하고 싶고 이런 유대가 항상 버럭이 같았으면 좋겠다는 거예요. 어, 어 인사를 전하는 거네. 그럼 내용을 말해줘야지. 뭐. <웃음> 오스트리아 사람들이 어, 우리는 여기 있다. <웃음> Even though you're better at us than at the Olympics, we are still waving. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. They're lovely people. They're not all brainwashed automatons. And now we'd like to hear from Ahmed Pollat, the Executive Director of Affinity, to present the closing remarks.